Hi, everybody. My name is Obi, and welcome to another video. Um, we're talking about one of my favorite shows, sitcoms? Question mark? Is that a sitcom? Is the good place a sitcom? I don't know. Hold on one second. Let me adjust my microphone. Okay. So, the good place. We're going to be talking about spoilers, so if you don't want spoilers, click away now. In three, two, one. Okay. I mean, also, if you haven't watched it, go watch it on Netflix. I know I just told everyone to go away, but but still go, go on Netflix.com and go watch it. <clears throat> Anyways... Follows Eleanor as she enters her way into the afterlife, especially since she doesn't belong there. The Good Place is described as a perfect utopia where the best of the best people are granted an eternity of happiness and peace. On the contrary, there's also a bad place where there's an eternity of torment and agonizing pain. So the show follows Ellen as she f finds help from Chidi and he tries to help her earn her way into the Good Place. That's the basic premise of the show, but the show goes in so deep once they realize that they're not in the good place, and it goes so much deeper. So although the show is goofy in concept, it actually tackles a lot of ethical questions of modern society. So let's talk about it. I can't believe I just had that sitting in the corner. First thing we're going to talk about is moral imperative. Immanuel Kant's categorical imperative is the idea that we must all act according to an unwavering moral code that cannot be changed by situational variables. Uh, Chidi brings us up by name. Kant is bring, brought up a lot within, within the show. So in his eyes, it wouldn't matter if someone was poor or stole, and stole food to feed their family. It is still morally unjustified. So, Chidi helping Eleanor might be wrong because although the good place might be crumbling, it is because of Eleanor's presence that the good place is messed up. So, Chidi has to find out if this moral imperative is, is a good idea or not, or if he should follow it using the moral imperative. Which, this is going to bring up to our next point. We, we talk about the moral imperative, and we're going to bring up how... The show brings up how capitalism is inherently evil. Later, in season three, Michael explains that the reason nobody has gotten to the good place in over a hundred years is because, well, I'll just show you. Have you said I thought there was something wrong with the point system? I finally know what it is. Life now is so complicated. It's impossible for anyone to be good enough for the good place. I know you don't like to learn too much about life on Earth to remain impartial, but these days just buying a tomato at a grocery store means that you are unwittingly supporting toxic pesticides, exploiting labor, contributing to global warming. Humans think that they're making one choice, but they're actually making dozens of choices they don't even know they're making. Now, you may be seeing this and thinking, hey, doesn't this contradict the moral imperative? And you'd be correct. The clip shows that people are making choices given their circumstances are unfortunately deemed as bad according to the system. Uh, sorry, deemed as bad according to the system. But that doesn't mean it was our fault that we have these greater consequences. Not everyone can focus on the consequences of their action merely because they have to look out for themselves and their loved ones. So inherently, Capitalism breeds all these things that are considered evil by the universe that creates an unfair chance for people to get into the good place. And it's because of capitalism, people, simple people who live their best lives won't live an eternity of happiness because 
and is ultimately controlled by an evil or several evil corporations that influence everyone's everyday lives. Because of capitalism buying something, as Michael said, something as simple as a tomato, the process that it goes through, the all the unethical things that happens to that tomato, purchasing it and con contributing to it is becomes an evil deed instead of just an everyday thing. Now, the show brings up a very good point about prison abolition. The Good Place makes it a point to show that everyone deserves a chance to go into the good place not just the best of the best, because people are inherently good and are capable of change, which is very important. Now, this obviously is applicable to people who are alive and the way that the current systems don't focus on rehabilitating criminals and instead focuses on punishing. They make it a point to show that rehabilitation may not work for everybody, but it is a step in the right direction given the circumstances that people are given with and ultimately have to deal with in modern society. Because everyone's situation, as we have talked about earlier, everyone's situation is different and we might have to make some eth unethical choices in the long run. Now, they do not mean that everyone deserves forgiveness and redemption. Everyone has to work to prove to everyone that they deserve a spot in the good place because that's what it's ultimately about being ready to be accepted into a society where your past doesn't haunt you. So not only is it overcoming a mental barrier, but a social barrier as well. And that comes to our final point. The Doctrine of Double Effect, coined by Thomas Aquinas. Aquinas? Aquinas? The Doctrine states that you can act in any way that causes an immoral repercussion so long as the intention is good. So, as we talked about earlier, the moral imperative is brought up but is ultimately shut down by the show as it displays people's overall actions with good intentions make people good enough for a chance to earn a spot in the good place. So although people making choices with good intentions have negative consequences, that doesn't mean they aren't worthy of eternal peace and happiness. But what do you guys think? Do you guys think that, that the moral imperative is the morally superior option? Or do you guys disagree and say that the show is about something else, something different? Some other moral question that it also brings up. There's tons of philosophical questions and answers that the show brings up, and I think it, it's very fun to discuss and talk about. So, if you guys haven't already, go watch the show. I kind of just spoiled a lot of the things for you, but thanks you guys so much for watching, and thank you to our patron, Carrie Smith of the Park King community, and you guys can help support us too um, by going to our Patreon, Patreon and supporting us there. Um, anyways, like, comment, subscribe, I'll see y'all in the next one, Check the mic and make sure ciao. It's